and good evening for you guys. So <clears throat> this is basically AWS CSOPS and Architect Associate. Okay, only CSOPS and Architect Associate I can cover off in this. Let me open up my course content. I guess you guys have already reviewed it, but just for your reference, what all the things that I can cover at the moment that we can discuss. <clears throat> okay, you guys can review this later on yeah, when you get the time. I'm just pinging you on the chat. So that you'll get some understanding. If your people are looking for exactly the same or something else. So I can cover the infrastructure part. Okay, I'll say VPC, peering, and network topology, network designing, how you can route the traffic, how you will secure your networks and firewalls, VPNs and stuff. <clears throat> These are all the things I can cover in real time. And we'll talk about EC2 instances, load balancers, application load balancer or the network load balancer, or the uh, auto scaling and stuff, right? These, these things we can cover off within the EC2. And then we'll talk about S3 databases and managing cloud alerting notifications and CloudWatch other stuff and role-based access control within the AWS, in a sense, how you will control your employees, accessing AWS portal and accessing resources it, at various levels. And apart from that, we'll talk about Lambda functions, how you can run the serverless, serverless functions and all, API gateways and stuff. These things we will discuss and the CDN profiles, how we will configure it and moving on to storage services we have efs storage we have fsx storage these things we will see how we can implement it and if you look at a couple of container services when i say container services microservices and container services we'll talk about docker we'll talk about aws kubernetes service how we can deploy it and use it apart from that we will we will see how you can create a immutable images through Packer and how you will deploy the code or how you will deploy the infrastructure by using infrastructure as the code. These are the few things that I'll concentrate, right? In short, and I can give you some overview on how you can migrate the servers from your on premise to AWS. In short, these are the things that I can cover off at the moment. What I can't do is uh, AWS for developer. If there is any something related to developer aspect, that I'll not be able to help you much. So you guys can let me know your experience and what you are looking at so that I, I can think what I can help you if, if you are looking for something else within the AWS. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so hey, this is Balaji Srinivas. So thanks for yeah. the introduction. So basically, I'm a front-end developer. So I work with uh, uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, and React framework for implementation of uh, uh, work. And then I am just work with Adobe technologies. Uh, I already work with Adobe Marketing Cloud. Uh, um, cloud. Uh -huh. uh, I'm just use those tools like uh, DTM, so Dynamic Tag Management, I, ho I hope you know. Then Launch, yeah, then yeah. AB Testing, you know, AB Testing, right? Then Adobe um, Analytics implementation. I use that cloud for that purpose. So this is not actually my background. I am just looking for review. So how this uh, Azure help really help for me? Yeah, this is this is basically an AWS one. Okay. okay. So in AWS, what I will do, I will try to cover more of the infrastructure point of view. Or okay. if you want to, if you want to bring your code and deploy the services within the AWS, how okay. you can set up that environment for any customer, and if there is any if there, is, if there is any setup which is already in in place how you can manage it for your customer. Okay, okay. okay. So it's more of actually, it's an administrator kind of thing, right? Administrator and then 
uh, managing yeah Managing. designing designing Design. in terms okay. of in terms of designing also so is it record any any new language uh, understanding like example uh, any any kind of uh, uh, language any language we need to learn like java or something uh, no, no no nothing nothing is needed for this or only thing is cloud it has its own uh, uh, java notation called json okay okay json templates okay if you if you can if you can uh, learn how to deploy json templates within the aws you call it as cloud formation template okay if you can learn the same thing same json template with little modification okay. and you're trying to deploy deploy it within the azure you call it as azure arm templates okay and if you are facing a difficulties learning all these things then you can go and learn the hashicops terraform which is okay. again infrastructure as a code tool okay if you, if you if you can understand that technology and if you can write something on the terraform then the the benefit is you can deploy it in aws you can deploy it on azure or you can deploy it on gcp or if you have on premise experience you can deploy anything in uh, vmware or any other virtualization platform across the on premise and azure okay okay so i prefer the, the terraforms most mostly and the organizations are widely using the terraforms nowadays okay okay if, if you go, if you go for any any as such uh, public cloud related job offering so one of the prerequisites either terraforms or if you are looking for if the customer is looking for aws the bare minimum expectation is uh, cloud formation templates okay 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 nothing to worry let me show you a simple thing when i say cloud formation templates aws will give you all this all these templates for each and every component let oh. me show you one of the template here quickly okay all these templates are readily available in your github official aws portal only okay. the thing is you need to you need to understand how this function and you need to understand how this can be used in your customer environment how you can modify it and tweak it and use it for your purpose so we can customize this one also right, based yes. on the request based on the customer requirement all okay. these templates are customized and you can use it for your day to day in your customer place okay, okay. So, it's a predefined uh, it's a pre there's a predefined templates right i'll not say predefined templates okay you can write your temp your own templates own for template. your customer for, okay. for your customer okay, okay. from scratch if you are okay. enthusiastic in writing the code okay, okay. if, if okay. somebody somebody is lazy like me or somebody don't know any coding basics except the c c language hash include stdio.h apart from okay. that i don't know anything right so in that case i can easily copy these templates and i'll okay. try to understand myself and see okay. what customer is looking at for which component he is looking at what kind of security and what kind of uh, tightening all he, what kind of uh, network network rules and regulations he is looking at in order to deploy these inside the aws i will modify these templates according to the customer requirement and i will i will deploy it okay got it okay because nothing to nothing to write from scratch it is already available you just have to modify based on your requirement and use it okay i'm not i'm not deviating i'm just more of high level let's okay. go ahead and start with the basics okay anybody anybody else has any inputs like developers are looking for architect training and later on people realize that this is not the right one right just to understand oh, is this my laptop md just just a second somebody is pinging me Uh, just I want to know uh, on uh, DevOps and infrastructure side, uh, what and all is covered. In the and yeah, on the DevOps side, I'll not be able to cover anything as such. Okay, let me show you something else. Okay, on the DevOps side, it is entirely different. Okay, if you, if you know the DevOps or traditional uh, DevOps practices. Okay. 
that you can automate your on-premise that you can automate AWS that you can automate Azure by using any of your DevOps methodologies. Let's say let's start with the PowerShell, let's start with the Git or let's start with the Puppet, Chef, Ansible, any of these tools. Okay, that is the reason why the DevOps is entirely a different course. There's no correlation between your AWS architect and the DevOps. But yeah, the market in market, if you want to sustain you need at least one public cloud along with the DevOps. Okay. Okay. And also, I'm not fully working on Kubernetes at the moment. Also, the GCP. These two things I'm still working on. Maybe, uh, let's say, six or seven odd months, I still need, rec still need to practice it. Then only I can give you with some real-time scenarios. So those things I'm not taking at the moment, only these three, AWS, Azure, and the DevOps. Hello, Shreyas, I'm audible. No, oh, you're not connected. You're not on the audio part. Let, it, let him connect and then let's start. Gopal, you sent me an email yesterday night, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, I got you, fine. Okay, guys, let's start off, okay. And then we'll try to understand some basics today. And it'll be like introduction session only, but I believe most of you guys are already aware of these terminologies and stuff. But just to reiterate for those who are fairly new on the public cloud platforms, it will be for them. And if you already know the public cloud basics and all, it will be boring like you that I can say. <clears throat> okay, so what is the basic difference between your cloud and your on-premise traditional customer environment. Okay, irrespective of what cloud that you are using, whether it is AWS or Azure or Oracle or GCP, anything, but what is the basic difference between these two? Anyone? Yeah. In cloud mean in non premises in the sense we have to manage our own um, infrastructure in the data center. Uh -huh. So cloud in the sense uh, deploying our own servers on someone's data center. Okay. Fair enough. Let let me treat let me treat this as on premise and we all as employees from your remote offices, you're supporting your customers, okay? Irrespective of what job roles, might be a admin, okay? Developer or architect, whoever. Okay, so what it makes a difference? If you're working for your customer remotely, okay, and not sitting in your data center, fair enough? So, parallelly, let's say this is your on-premise data center, and you have something called cloud, which is AWS. Customer has both, okay? So what it makes a difference? for you if you're working from remote. Let's say in a developer perspective, he has something which he has developed in his part of sprint release, right? And he's ready with his code, where he will save the code in traditional way? By his local or Local, yeah, local repository, yeah. file share or a repository, yeah, mm -hmm. right. In your traditional on premise terminology, the same developer when it comes to cloud, where exactly he will save the code? Then he have access the code cloud, okay. You have multiple ways, okay. If you look at the uh, code management. 
you have github you have azure repositories you have bitbucket right lot of repositories are available okay irrespective of which cloud that you are using right and you have a granular level control this code you can deploy it on cloud or if it has a dependency you can go and deploy it in uh, on premise as well the way, okay. of, the way of code management is also changed along with the along with the public cloud right so my my training is as i said more of operations and the uh, designing perspective i'll not be able to tell you how this code will be developed and how this sprints will be managed how these deployments will be ma managed okay so mm -hmm. i'm assuming there will be some build and release team right who manages the deployments and on top of that you'll have team of developers right who works on sprints maybe you have your modules to develop and somebody will consolidate the code within the uh, what i can say <clears throat> github repositories okay and then he will create the artifacts and deploy it within the customer environment now how you will keep your infrastructure ready for any of these deployments in your traditional way how you will how you will do that if I, if you want to release some some of your product or if you want to release some of your package so how you will deploy it in your traditional way um, maybe balaji can help us much you will the environment or the production environment you you will you will request somebody right yeah Some of course normally we can reach out the release team right we normally yeah. reach out the release team yeah so what release team will do release team will create the packages based on your sprints right and they can push it when the when the infrastructure is ready now yeah. the question is how you will bring that infrastructure into in place fair enough understood so build and release team is purely dependent on some sysadmin who manages this infrastructure on the back end exactly yeah right <laughs> so again the dependency is you need some sysadmin or admin who manages the infra exactly yeah even okay. it's test environment or stage environment so everything Whatever. irrespective yeah. of irrespective of what whether it is a server or yeah. it's just a serverless function or it's just a database component or i can say the database is up and running since last eight years now you you developed with the new module that new module will go and talk to database over 1433 port the new module is running as a standalone application as a code or uh, yeah okay infrastructure as a code or application as a code you have a, some standalone application that that is part of your release but somebody has to spin up that application and copy your code and deploy it and use it for production but who will manage that infra somebody from the backend sysadmin who manages the infra okay so when it comes to the cloud the, the looking at the infra infrastructure is completely changed so traditionally how you will do that let's say you're saying there will be three type of environments that you always need right one is prod another one is dev or test right yeah dev test i'll say another one is maybe uat uat is a stage right uat are a stage yeah right so these are the hypothetical if i go inside if i talk about granular level even i don't know how these environments will be managed in terms of developer point of view but in terms of infra point of view what i need let's say customer is having some of these environments so from infra point of view if i look at what all the things that i will do let's say 
I have a physical hardware, which is in my on-premise I'm talking about, HP DL380 Zen 10, latest hardware. Okay, the configuration is something like this. Uh, 128 GB RAM, 32 CPU, and 2 TB storage, and 10 Gbps network connectivity within my center. This is this is the existing environment. 10 Gbps network in the sense, the ports which I will connect to the server will support 10 Gbps copper cables. Now I am not talking about legacy. Uh, on premise, let's say latest on premise, which is always running on your some some of the virtualization environment. When I say virtualization environment, what normally it does, you will have some sort of hypervisor. Okay, maybe ESXi, maybe Hyper V, okay, or maybe customer using some sort of Nutanix AHV. Okay. These are the virtualization softwares which we will install on top of a physical server in traditional way. Now when it comes to the your environment setup, let's say I have one production three tier application. In, a, in the sense, I need at least two or three servers. Let's say this one is web web front or web slash app front and this one is db and what you'll have there will be some soft linking between both of them like this why why you need a soft linking between both of them so it's needed data right so web application needed data from database yes yeah so probably your application is talking with the database if a database is sql you'll need a JDBC or ODBC or any other development platform related driver, which go <laughs> and talk to your SQL database over 1433. Okay. So in this case, what happens? You have your, you have your web application. Also, some of your application data sitting on the same server and your database is separate. Let's say this is your production environment. Okay, when it comes to UAT or dev test, what you will do? The recommendation is never ever keep your UAT dev test or any other environments in this box. Okay, and if a customer is more particular, never ever keep in this building. Or if a, if a customer is enterprise, he will say, never ever keep in this region, in, we call it as in the cloud, and we call it as data center in traditional way. Right? In data center, let's say, this data center is in USA, somewhere in the east. Now, he need to have the secondary environment somewhere same sort of environment somewhere okay when i say somewhere within the united states only okay data will not go outside the country within the states only the but the recommendation is the distance between these two environments must be 300 miles that's a basic criteria and by design you have to keep another production environment it's a product it's another production another, another production environment okay okay so like a backup yeah. maybe on west or somewhere else okay at least 300 miles now what happens people what people will do was I already have a production which is already running rather than keeping another production environment why can't we have a same setup okay and you'll have your production or the same database 
it will be syncing always or you have there's a lot of methodologies to do the replication and do the failover and do the dr drills and stuff that we will discuss later on but just for your understanding i'm saying rather than keeping a production what we will do we will run uat or what i will do i'll simply use another web okay another db for production and beside you create a small infra the, with the minimal size this will be your uat okay which sits on the same data center on the same hardware and beside i'll say your dev test your, your your production will have on both sides and you your uat will be sitting on one one side and your dev test will be sitting on other side the reason is the back end underlying hardware you can efficiently use it otherwise you need one more environment to set up what the things will be syncing like region in usa east and west from web to db yeah okay it's these two only this won't sync this won't sync so what i will do practically these two servers and these two servers i'm not saying oh, two servers they might be 20 servers supporting this application and database on the back end but i will use high end cpu in the sense dedicated cpu hmm. and ram and premium storage called ssd this is because it's production and for uat there i'm saying 2 tb storage i'm not specifying what kind of storage in the market there are three types of storage one is sas another one is sata another one is ssd so this system can handle three of them even if you put ssd sas or sata it will take it and it will behave like that based on the performance so for these front end production servers we can offer ssd and for these back end uat and test environments we can offer sas or sata the low end storage because you don't need to spend that much cost on the development environment or the SAS, uh, uat environments okay uh, this is this is how we used to do it in traditional way now let's take let's take any cloud platform irrespective of which cloud that you are learning or which cloud that you are managing they will offer you services in the form of these these terms they will say infrastructure as a service what do you mean by infrastructure as a service okay let's go back and try to see how many job roles that i can see on this you have a front end all the development right and you need sysadmins even in the sysadmins you have server you have virtualization windows or linux or another network and storage and so on there are a couple of more job roles these are all the traditional job roles what people will handle these kind of records because i'm representing one server in this data center these kind of servers you might have 5000 in a day to day 1% equipment needs some attention let's say okay at least how much 50 odd servers needs some attention i'm not saying remove 50 hardware and uh, insert a new 50 hardware i'm saying somebody needs to look at the sensors somebody needs to look at the software aspects somebody needs to look at the cables uh, and so on and so on when it talk when, I, when it comes to day-to-day -day operations right one percent means at least let's say 10 people eight hours they need to spend on fixing these so when it comes to cloud this overhead will be minimized because whatever the things that i'm saying one percent of hardware management or one percent of the system management task 
in cloud they will offer you saying infrastructure as a service means boss you are managing your own data center for your front end business or infrastructure business or any other front line business that you are doing for your customer okay you are managing your own data center you feel like it's hectic not cost efficient then use my services because i have our data centers and good bandwidth connectivity across the globe and you can place your business on the fly at any point of time in any country and you can take it back whenever you don't need it these are the flexibilities that they are providing right so they will they will provide these flexibilities in the form of three things one is infrastructure as a service another one is platform as a service another one is software as a service okay fair enough these are the three general terms that everyone understand so we still have a couple of things couple of other small cloud vendors they will say business continuity disaster recovery as a service what do you mean by this and some other some other cloud vendor will say boss anything as a service you, you just tell me the problem i will help you what i can do for you okay so a lot of other terminologies are there and if you if you keep on watching these terminals there is one more thing called iac okay you just have a developers you don't have any admins or you are purely working on develop devops methodologies you hardly have a people who understand the infrastructure but you have a front end developers who those who can manage the code very well so these cloud platforms can respond to your codes called infrastructure as a code you just need a in environment just execute this code environment is ready on the back end and you have another script that can push the code along with the application along with the data that everything is up and running within fraction of seconds by using infrastructure as a code if you are purely development uh, and purely product based company and you don't want to maintain any of those infrastructure aspects any example for iac where it's a okay so let's say you are working on one website yeah one website hosting simple website you just but, uh, do you have any live example do you know any live example for iac any any customer any way using yes, IAC? yes 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 most of the customers are using okay. iac okay so they have their own uh, iac repositories within the azure devops portal because the aws doesn't have any uh, devops portal to integrate you need to set up your own run times let's say if you want to set up your devops uh, methodologies you need to take few few servers and set up your repositories set up your pipelines by jenkins and set up your uh, automation through ansible and stuff these things you need to deploy it and separately and set set the environment for one time and you manage it in azure it is not like that you can simply go to well, let me do this one yeah so dev.azure.com Let me see. That will be uh, somewhere you will see on my screen Terraforms. Yes, Terraforms. This is simple Terraform code which we can use it. This is IAC code. Okay, if I want to deploy something in Azure, I will write this IAC code. I'll simply execute it. Your server or service will be up and running like two minutes. Let me see. Oh no, this is not another. I'll show you later on. Okay, I need to set this environment properly. Yeah. Okay. 
I can't log into any customer environment, so that's the reason I'm just showing up my lab environment. Okay. And you see, you can create your own repository. Especially in my company, uh, yeah. whenever we come up with any new version of our application, uh -huh. always go to Jenkins and then uh, spin up an instance of AWS. Uh -huh. So that is all was done by my company only it is not uh, provided by as, uh, aws because he, as you said that it is not given readily available by aws right yeah uh, yeah 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 but you have your own jenkins server okay that jenkins okay. server is also sitting on aws okay, okay. Uh, in some some corner and mm -hmm. your at, that is managing your deployments Okay. You have to set up that. But in this case, I don't need to set up any Jenkins. I don't need to set up any uh, repositories. I don't need to set up anything as such pipeline automation in Azure DevOps. It's more simplified DevOps methodologies that they come up with. This single portal, you can manage everything. Let's say I have some Terraform code, which is here. So I can simply run it and I, this, this will go and deploy in AWS or this will go and deploy in Azure. If I provide you the authentication and authorization, why are these parameters? Okay. okay. So they they have their own own user interface. Like they, they just like in AWS, if I want to create a VM, then I have to go through a lot of tabs. But in Jenkins, it is just only few things they ask, like your email address. Just, no, no, it's just one click. Okay. And it will ask, it will ask a few things to record because you have an enterprise for 50 odd people who works on the project. <clears throat> who is doing this deployment? If, so, ah. if, so, if somebody is doing an audit on the back end, boss, okay. everybody is running a Jenkins and everybody is taking a server and everybody leaving the server as it is. And in the month end, the bill is like, ah. okay. So okay, how okay. we will, how we will put those controls in place. So they have introduced some sort of cross checking. Mm -hmm. What is your employee ID and what is your task ID which you are going to deploy it? You need some tracking ID. Otherwise, what is your uh, Jira ticket ID? If you are using Jira for your mm -hmm. Jira for your uh, ma cloud management or the cloud deployment management, they will ask you task ID. Jira task ID, they have to supply it. Otherwise, it won't go further. You can put those rules and regulations just to track who is doing what. Okay. 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 So let's discuss these three <laughs> aspects. These, these, these are a few small things that I, if the time, if time permits, we will discuss. We still have 15 minutes. Let's try to cover off these things high in high level, and tomorrow we can talk more about in detail. So take the same same traditional way. In traditional way, what you will do? You need a server which is hardware right and as i said without virtualization there is no cloud at all the base concept is virtualization that works on hypervisor okay that works on hypervisor and what you will do let's say the requirement is to deploy Linux machine and on top of Linux, customer is asking you to deploy Nginx or any other web service and run the web application. So in this case, what all the things you will do in the infrastructure as a service, you don't touch this hardware. You don't touch this hypervisor. Okay, your scope is only log into that portal and deploy Linux machine. Once the Linux server is up and running, okay, remotely from your home or your office, you access this machine and manage this application. Want to install it or uninstall it or reinstall it or manage the existing one. It is up to you. Everything is in your control because the machine is yours. Okay, but this machine is running on the backend hardware on top of a hypervisor. Let's say this machine belongs to you. 
and within the same within the same hardware or within the same building even i have i have got one more request for my customer let's say i'm working for another customer and i got another requirement even i can deploy the same sort of linux server in the same hardware okay and aws portal will give, give you the granular level segregation these two machines can't see each other because this is visible on your portal if you log in into your console.aws.com you will see this server under your ec2 instances if i log into my portal this server will be shown in my repo my repository or, or i will say my, in my portal and i can manage from my office okay the, you need what you need to understand is there might be a chance that definitely this server and this server will be sharing the same hardware and same hypervisor and same network on the back end same physical network on the back end but how this is this is got segregated how this is got managed and how this is got secured for both the customers by by two different uh, what i can say um, environments that piece of software that aws runs on top of it where their own console right is running for that segregation everything in infrastructure as a service what you will do your scope is fairly limited you don't touch this hardware and stuff your responsibility is only managing these virtual machines from your portal that's it understood but in traditional way what we will do for everything you need to do a work from scratch i i, I don't say if i want to create a new machine you, do i need to reformat this hardware no but this if something goes wrong with the hardware you are responsible in traditional way but in when it comes to cloud any cloud i'm not saying aws whether you take a, a azure or anything the server and the hypervisor you don't touch it there is no visibility for that right they will take care of that hardware and stuff so that you are your management overhead and your day to day uh, administration overhead will be minimized the same concept when it comes to platform as a service you'll have a same hardware there's no change right and let me put you'll have a same hypervisor on top there's no change and let's say i have one server okay sql 2019 server on top of on top of linux possible nowadays right and you're you're just interested in db container and username and password db container let's say what is what do you mean by db container let's say you are working on a development project or you are working on purely development project that has integration with your database part of the delivery so you can you are purely working on development space all right you don't want to use the sql server whether it is a linux or windows you really don't bother what kind of hardware you really don't bother what kind of hypervisor you really don't bother what you bother is you just need a database which you can integrate with the driver and see the application behavior part of your uat okay now this database instance is the key for your business your your least bothered about rest of the things now you have done with your developments aspect your code is ready everything everything is ready just to bring this instance you're spending like two weeks your deployment or uat testing or any other 
planned business is delayed by two weeks because you don't have the DB to connect in traditional way because the people are working on the installation configuration deployment and then instance creation and then container creation and create a username and password for you and they will send you an email with the link saying this is the IP this is the port number and you use this username and password finally you connect and use it so when it comes to cloud okay you list bothered about any of these action items marked in red you don't you don't bother about any of those things your key is db so in platform as a service what happens if you just need a database boss take it as just a database and use it for your integration purpose and pay for only this database you no need to pay for a server you no need to pay for virtualization or a back-end hardware and back-end network anything as such you just pay me for that container utilization how many database transactions that you are running on top of the database you just pay for that transactions only per hour 0.5 dollar let's say for example this is possible with pass service what if what aws will do whatever the whatever the things that are marked in red aws will take care okay understood Okay, when it comes to software as a service, these things are running out of time. These things we can talk later tomorrow. So when it comes to software as a service, again, the structure will remain same. Nothing to change because this is base. Without this, there's nothing. And sorry, you have your server okay and you have your application on top of your server okay that means let's say you have a windows server and you have installed exchange microsoft exchange and exchange is up and running you just create a mailbox okay integrate with your active directory and send an email to your new employee your new employee who has onboarded yesterday and just give the temporary credentials and just ask him to log in o365 or you have your own uh, outlook in your system just open it and type username and password he will be able to connect to this mailbox and manage it in this case there is a hardware in the back end there is a hypervisor in the back end there is a windows server in the back end there is an exchange application in the back end none of these are part of our responsibility everything will be taken care by azure in our in this case in this example and you are purely you are purely expecting a simple mailbox which is up and running without any major changes and using it your for your day to day it's just a piece of software and you are using it for your day to day activities to exchange the emails across the organization who is taking care of rest of the stuff azure is taking care of your rest of the stuff in the form of software as a service and what about the examples when it comes to aws you have salesforce right which is part of saas offering the, the erp application you just need it just host this in the uh, just just trigger the salesforce application or deploy the salesforce saas application within the aws and your your organization is ready with your uh, what i can say uh, end to end erp application up and running okay what about the back end application list bothered what about the back end hardware list bothered what about the back end server list bothered everything will be managed by the respective cloud vendors if you deploy it in azure azure will take care if you deploy it in aws aws will take care only you have to pay for the application which you are using at the end end user point end user level okay and one more sas sas thing let's say your cloud watch are you going to uh, set up the CloudWatch alerts and stuff, or you, are you going to set up the CloudWatch system, CloudWatch, uh, what I can say, uh, 
connections between your resources, all the stuff. Just a simple SaaS service, software as a service. If we have CloudWatch within AWS, what you will do, you will go and connect all your services. How many services that you have within the AWS? First, if you scroll down, you have somewhere around 200 and plus odd services, right? Irrespective of what kind of business that you are doing, you can connect with your satellite or you can connect simple application within AWS. So all these things can send the data to CloudWatch because that is only one repository within AWS. If somebody want to do a postmortem, who is doing what? Somebody did something and he left the organization and for auditing purpose after a six, six years, if somebody want to check something, what is happened on that particular time, the CloudWatch is the only repository which you want to pull out the data and watch it. If a CloudWatch is not saving more than 30 days, then your ultimate location is your S3 bucket. Go to S3 bucket and get the data. Whether it is a seven years old, doesn't matter. Right? So your CloudWatch is your one of the SaaS service if you want to use it within the AWS for your day-to-day. -day. And with, as I said, we still have a couple of more things. These three action items we will we can discuss tomorrow and further we can talk about other basic terminologies within the aws okay i'll stop here any questions from anybody i'm happy to take it <coughs> guys mahesh i've seen mahesh join shreyas audible yeah shreni audible okay okay yeah you join late man so we, we just just started I was having some trouble with laptop but yeah i i, uh, I think i just missed the uh, very basic in the front first and we haven't discussed much only this basic terminologies not even on a technical topic that we're discussing today but yeah tomorrow we can discuss more about Shreni, uh, i had a question uh on the infrastructure when you are showing right uh, the mm -hmm. production and uh, uat on the same environment so were you talking about like in the same server in the same hardware that we really don't know the... because because mm -hmm. AWS, if you if you deploy it in AWS, it's all everything is AWS duty. We don't consider whether it is sitting on the same hardware or sitting on the same rack or sitting on the same building. If you you can control building one, building two, building three, building four, but if it is within the within the building, within the rack or within the server, you never know. That is the reason why I'm saying. You have your own portal. I have my own portal. Console.aws.com. You have your own account. You log in. I will also log in. If I deploy one server for my business, you deploy one server for your business. There might be a chance that our, our both systems will go and sit on the same hardware. That we never know. Okay. Because that's uh, a proprietary. Since that's it's a prop on, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since it's on AWS, right? Uh, everything is on AWS. I cannot see your infrastructure. You cannot see mine, but. Yeah. But uh, AWS from the back end, like they, they will be able to check on the data or no. or the details of our servers or anything. No, that again is to legal constraints. If they want, they can. But there is a signed agreement on every data center what they build against to the local government rules and regulations. So they can't really go and check what you have in your server. Okay. So the one company okay. which is still unbeatable okay before this aws and azure come into picture right it's so pure virtualization based right. what they will do you have one hardware and you spend 20 lakhs to purchase this hardware example but when you check after three years you you pull out the resource utilizations for last three years you hardly use 26 percent of your actual resources you buy it so three years back, let's say you purchase a server with 128 GB RAM. And after three years of when the warranty is expired and you looked at the utilization, let's say 30, not even 30% you're touching. Rest of the 70% of resources inside the system are wasted for three years. Means out of your 20 lakhs, how much you wasted? 30% 30, 30 used, 70% you wasted. So based on that concept, this company has up in early 2000 or 1999 or 2000 that time so the base is you just apply my software on top of your hardware and you do 
10, 10 servers with 10 different business units or 10 different customers. In that case, you're saying, can I go back and check all the 10 servers from the back end on the server, physical server? No, you can't read it. Even if you're trying to read it, that the data store which is sitting on the back end inside the VMware, it won't allow you to read the files directly. What customer is running with what kind of data that is holding with so that is only the reason the virtualization is successful in the market in traditional way or in the cloud yeah i'm not saying it is highly impossible or not at all possible there is a possible ways if, if companies want to decode it and see it but that's not that against to the business loss if, if we are going too much patental rights. Any any other questions on the basic? Okay, you 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 understand what I'm trying to cover off here, at least. Yeah. Be on mute. MC, MC, be on mute. Yeah. So a lot of noise. Uh, guys, it is it will be like morning six to seven every day. Okay, if you guys want to continue on, on the same, okay, so we can catch up every day six to seven. So that's the reason I'm not taking any names at the moment. I'm not sure how many will continue, how many will drop off. So if you guys have decided to continue, join on the same bridge every day six to seven. Uh, the, the is there is... any plan on uh, evening batch? Sorry, is there any uh, evening batch we have? Uh, Mahesh, uh, just be on yeah, be on mute, be on mute. Uh, I'm also working for other customers, so my office timing is 11 to 8, so I can't take any evening classes. So only feasible time is 6 to 7 in the morning or 7:30 to 9 in the morning and 9:30 to 11. Max 11, I can take a classes. From 11:30 to 8:30, I'm working for a customer, so I just stop the evening classes after 8:30. Because if I start it, I can't take this morning six o'clock class. If I if I start taking the evening class, no, so I'll not be able to contribute here. So unfortunately, so evening batches. If you if you can manage and join in the morning six o'clock, it will be good. So actually, it is one hour class, right, from Monday to Friday. So. Sorry. It's, it's so it's a one hour class so 6 a.m to 7, 7 a.m yes. monday to friday so yes. not call... monday to friday uh, just just for just for the message, message purpose i typed as monday to friday it will be like monday to saturday or monday to sunday if you guys are okay i'm happy to continue every day sure, sure, but sure, you, sure. just beyond so, me, there's a lot of background from your side once yeah you can type it I'm, I'm not able to hear you anything, a lot of background work. Other people will get the same noise. So understood. Okay, the reason why, why I have restricted this to one hour, normally I have one hour 15 minutes or one hour 30 minutes sessions because one hour will be the lab and at least a 15 minutes for discussion. If, the, if there is any questions that needs to be highlighted, we can discuss in that 15 minutes. So we will try to be within that one or 15 minutes if, if, if possible we can connect at 5 45 in the morning if that is too early six o'clock is fine six to seven fifteen i can spend i need at least a 15 minutes break for the other session to pick up okay i'm happy to extend till 7 15 and monday to saturday if you guys are okay no 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 man Two hours I can't take it because I do have other batches and even if I take it for two hours after one hour people start losing their concentration weekend we can try for one session you will see how how people how people will go mad one hour is good enough and 15 minutes discussion for scenarios or questions is normal okay come see and Balaji Ravi, any 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 questions from your side, Sanjay? No. No. Yeah, actually, uh, how many days uh, we go this one session? This visit, uh, AWS. AWS, it will be like different. Okay, 
40 40 different sessions will be like 40 days okay okay and um, we still have here yeah oh, no, sorry uh, will we get uh, a recording as well for per session yeah, uh, yeah every session this is like introduction session you won't get much in it but i have recorded this as well i will upload it and share it to everyone okay Okay, whoever, whoever is enrolls now, so I'll share the video recordings as well. All right, guys, let's catch up tomorrow. Okay, and you guys think of it if you guys want to join, you can join tomorrow if you want to continue. Okay, and fee, as I said, is 12,000 that you can pay maybe on Monday, Saturday, Sunday. You can catch up just for the, to cover up these basics, and from Monday onwards, we can start the labs. So I'll, I'll I'll take the fee on Monday. And what what we can do uh, for you people, it's Friday evening tomorrow. If you guys want to join, okay. So you can join on Friday, and Saturday we can take a break, and Sunday evening again we can catch up. That is my Monday morning. Yeah, Gopal, tell me. Uh, wait, uh, anything. Uh... Sorry, sorry, Gopal, we are not able to hear you anything. You are not audible at all. Yeah, is it possible to pay uh, uh, two, two part? What you are saying? You are saying a part payment? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's I mean, if you are in India, it's okay, man. You can pay for two times. So initially, six thousand six thousand for. A, people yeah. it will be hard because they have to pay two transactional okay. charges so for them i will take one time what you yeah. you can pay two times not an issue yeah thank you sir. okay so all right guys let's let's stop here we will we can catch up tomorrow same time and then we'll see what all things that we can cover and you guys have something to add on top of this course content no you have something on your day to day or something you want to add up something just ping me tomorrow so that I can I can learn myself or at least I can keep it ready for next students because these are the things that I am working so far these are the things what I am implementing so far that those things I have included here okay yeah. right let, let's stop here we can catch up tomorrow same time bye bye thank you so much it's really good thank you so thank you thank you bye thank you, thank you so much bye, bye. Thank you.